Hey everyone, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and this is my acute renal course on acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. This is the first of four videos. This is going to be a general overview of the acute kidney injury where I explain the underlying causes and the uh, treatments of it. I welcome you along this course and you can follow me at NursingCamp.com and let's get into it. Hi, this is Nursing Camp, and what, this is what you should know about renal acute kidney injury. An overview, where I go over the seven most important things about acute kidney injury. The overview, the phases, urine output, pre-renal, post-renal, intrarenal, and the nursing seven, where I break everything down into acute kidney injury. So let's get into it. When we're talking about acute kidney injury, what we're really talking about is perfusion. And when we're talking about perfusion in acute kidney injury, there are basically three different types underneath this. You have pre-renal, intrarenal, and post-renal. So whenever we see your acute kidney injury or acute kidney failure, um, what you're really asking is what kind. And when you're asking what kind, um, if they're referring to acute kidney failure or injury, it can be any one of these three things underneath it. Now, acute kidney injury will generally go through several phases. And there's actually four of them. The onset is the first phase. Now the onset could be all these three different reasons. Whether it's a pre-renal condition, which is pre-B before the kidney, intrarenal, which is inside the kidney, actual insult to the kidney like medications, or post-renal, which may be a cause of something after the kidney like a clot or a kink or a BPH or something like that. But everybody will have this onset and this onset can be up to up to a few days. Now if, if it isn't addressed they will move into the next phase which is called the oliguric phase and that oliguric phase is when there's no urine output. And what if that is not corrected during that time? It's basically just a, a, a period of time where the kidney is, is protecting itself. When we're looking at acute kidney injury, whether it be pre, intra, or post, on pre-renal failure, it's generally volume related. And so we generally have a condition that is volume related, and we're going to see this elevation of this BUN. And we'll see the creatinine being normal and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes but what happens is is that that's basically on a pre-renal condition that's called 20 over 1. It's just a term that says pre-renal and I'll explain that a little bit more later. The next thing is intrarenal. Now intrarenal is actually it has moved inside the kidney and generally as the B1 is elevated then the creatinine is also at elevated. At this stage we are now intrarenal inside the kidney. There are other causes whether the person is bleeding or they have an infection or they're in anticoagulants can all cause acute kidney injury. So the big thing about labs is labs play, play an important part in the BUN and creatinine is pivotal in the identification and diagnosis of acute kidney injury. So let's look at it a little bit more closely. So let's take pre-renal failure. Labs are pivotal in the assessment of acute kidney injury. When we're looking at acute kidney injury or acute kidney failure, we look at the BUN. And the BUN is blood urea nitrogen. And let's take a, a pre-renal failure patient. Now a pre-renal failure patient is the problem B before the kidney. And that is the pre-renal situation. So that could be hypovolemia or hypotension, low blood pressure. How do we know it's low? Well, we, we assess what's called the mean arterial pressure. And if that mean arterial pressure is less than 60, 65, that's going to elevate this BUN and creatinine. So we look at the BUN first. If that's elevated, we go down to the creatinine. Now, if that's normal, the patient is dry, or what we like to call 20 over 1, which is a pre-renal uh, failure. The second step of this diagram is to look at the BUN first. And then, if that's elevated, go down to the creatinine. If that's also elevated, we circle both of them. And then we have to say to ourselves, is this an acute problem or a chronic problem? If it is an acute problem, we, we will go down to the GFR. And the GFR is called the glomerular filtration rate. And that is basically how well the kidney is functioning. And we want that number greater than 60. If it's less than 60, there is a major problem with this patient. And we're going to look at that closely when we look at um, 
acute kidney injury pre-renal conditions. So, recap. The first thing that we do is we look at the BUN. If the BUN is elevated, we go down to the creatinine. How well is the kidney working? And if it is fine, that's dry. And that's called 20 to 1. Second step. You look at the BUN, if that's elevated, yes. Then you go down to the creatinine, is that also elevated? If it is, we circle both of them, then we go down to the GFR. We assess that GFR, see how well the kidney is working, and we hope that it's greater than 60. If it is less than 60, we are definitely in an acute kidney injury, and that patient needs further evaluation. And usually at this stage, this is called the onset, and we move to the next stage, which would be called decreased urine output or oligaric state. So in oligaric state, urine is second. And what we're looking at with the urine is, is that we're going to assess it. A normal urinary output should be greater than 30 cc's an hour or greater than 424 hours. If it is not, and there is an acute injury onset like pre-renal, which we were just talking about, the patient will have normal urinary output. And so a lot of time in acute kidney injury, we are going to assess urinary output. And the way that we do that is we can do it with a, a bladder scan. And a bladder scan is basically an ultrasound that will assess this bladder. And to see whether or not there's actual fluid of, of uh, or urine in the, in the bladder. And that's important to know because if a person doesn't have a, uh, any urinary output, we want to see, is this a post-renal problem? Is there an actual problem going on underneath the kidney that we don't know what's happening? So we need to assess. And we always, always, always assess before we implement. We always assess what's going on before we ever put a Foley in, which is more invasive or what have you. Okay, so the four P's of a bladder scan is position, pubis, area, pressure, and then pivot. So basically what we do is, do is we find a symphys pubis right there, and then we basically put the position right there, and then we basically will put pressure on, and then we're going to rotate it. And so we want that person generally post void, and we are going to rotate back and forth and get a measurement. We generally do this times three, and then we do an average of it. Now the way that we look at this is, is that we take the on a bladder scan, we, I think of a B, you separate this out, this is 100, and this looks like a 3, so that's 300. And a bladder scan should be generally 100 to 300. If it is, if it is um, less than 100, that means they're not retaining any fluid, and that's a good sign. However, if it's greater than 100 to 300, um, that means there is fluid or urine still in the bladder. And that's an important assessment. If it is greater than 300, then we need an intervention. We need to either put a Foley in or a doctor would need to be notified about that. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the three different types of acute kidney injury. And those three different types are what we just talked about. We, we said that on the onset, on all the onsets, they're going to go through these basic phases. And the onset is different on each one. They could either be the pre-renal, which is before the kidney, intra-renal, which is inside the kidney, or post-renal, which is after the kidney. And this is called PIP. And PIP is pre, intra, and post. Now, when we're looking at this, these are the onsets. If those aren't addressed, any pre-renal concerns, post-renal concerns, <clears throat> they can become intrarenal. If you want to understand about acute kidney injury and the, the underlying causes more extensively, I have other videos on this on pre, intra, and post where I cover these study sheets more in depth. And But this is just basically a general overview. We're going to go over the three types really quick. And when we're looking at all these, you just always want to think about that these are all onsets. These are all the causes, whether it's a pre before the kidney, if it's actually a problem inside the kidney, or it's post after the kidney. So when we're looking at the first type, we really started to talk about it, and that was called uh, pre-renal. And in the sheet, I kind of cover all these three different areas. And so when we're looking at pre-renal, we're looking outside the kidney. And when you're looking outside the kidney, the problem B before the kidney. And this here is like hypotension hypovolemia, hemorrhage, bleeding, like a H and H is low, heart failure, um, hypoperfusion, or if they're peeing, puking, or pooping, like vomiting, or infection, or burns with an extreme fluid shift, um, especially with burns. So volume tends to be a key priority with burn patients. So what happens is, is that this, this 
dry state right here, we evaluated that BUN and creatinine. And we said earlier is, is that you look at that BUN, if that's elevated, you go down to the kidney, and what you're really trying to figure out is how well is that kidney working. And if the kidney is normal, uh, the creatinine should be normal. And that means that this is an outside state. This is a pre-renal concern. When we're talking about post-renal problems, we're talking about after the kidney. And whatever that problem is, it's outside the kidney. It's on the after. So generally with pre-renal problems, the problem would be before the kidney. So like hypovolemia, we can correct with volume, fluid, or hemorrhage. We can give them blood and post renal we generally prevent it from happening and it's and generally things after the kidney like clots so we have the three c's which are clots cancer and crystals but if you generally think that the problem is after the kidney we generally try to prevent that so when talking about clots we may have somebody who has uh, bph and they have a uh, you know remove their prostate and Generally, when a patient has like a prostate problem and their BPH is elevated and the urine can't get out. And so generally, generally we, we give them alpha-1 blockers, alpha-1 for one prostate. And what those alpha-1 blockers do is they basically will allow for the, the prostate to relax and therefore the urine can pass through. Uh, also, we have clots, which clots are generally because of like if we remove this prostate and you know if you have a traumatic foley or something like that. And that's why we do con uh, continuous bladder irrigation to prevent clots from forming. So crystals would be uric acid crystals and some medications. Um, also, some infections can cause a uh, a problem with post renal and also neurogenic bladder. Now, neurogenic bladder is um, something where the person will be uh, with autonomic dysreflexia, a T6 injury, or um, above will generally have a neurogenic bladder, which they'll need a, a regular bladder program like um, intermittent catheterizations to prevent a post renal problem. Also, any normal person can just get kidney stones and that could cause a problem with that. General rule of thumb is, is that with post renal failure, we generally do always do a bladder scan to assess whether or not that person has any uh, urinary uh, retention or anything like that. And that, that number we want less than 100. And if it is greater than 300 or 250, generally an intervention needs to be done like a Foley or something like that. The last phase we're going to talk about is intrarenal failure. Now, intrarenal failure, when we took it in context, is when you have pre-renal failure, you have a problem B before the kidney. And intrarenal problem is a problem inside the kidney, and post-renal is a problem after the kidney. So when you're looking at intrarenal, now things that generally cause that are medications. Now medications that we give, now they could be related to contrast in these medications like Motrin or Amphotericin or even pre-renal problems. If you don't deal with that hemorrhage or that hypertension, it will eventually become an inter renal problem. Or the patient maintains acidosis for too long, it can become intrarenal or in a hypoxic state. How do we know it's an intrarenal problem? Well, generally that is, is that we're always monitoring the BUN and creatinine. And if that BUN is elevated, we go down to the creatinine. Now, in any other state other than intrarenal, you have the BUN that's elevated in a normal creatinine. Because that creatinine says that the kidney is working fine. But if you have an elevated BUN and an elevated creatinine, you circle both of them, and then you say, is this an acute problem or a chronic problem? Well, we're talking about acute kidney injury here. So if you gave metformin and contrast together, you could have an elevation of this BUN and creatinine. What do we do after that? We go down to the GFR, and we look at the GFR and see how well that's that's um, functioning. If it is greater than 60, um, the kidney is somewhat reserved however if it's less than 60 that acute kidney injury is much more uh, complicated and problematic all right let's pull it all together all right acute kidney injury the main concern with acute kidney injury injury is that it can happen to anyone whether they're walking uh, coming into the hospital or being in the hospital it really has no differentiation on sex or ages the main symptom of acute kidney injury is understanding any pre or post renal problems that could be causing it, like a BPH or hypovolemia, hypotension. The main symptom is generally when we see urinary output. 
and we see no urinary output. That's less than 30 cc's an hour or greater than um, or less than 424 hours. Precipitate in case that can be pre or post renal and also can just be intra renal problems. So when you're looking at acute kidney injury, you have to decide which one we're really talking about. Main complication is always that intrarenal. It becomes an actual serious problem where the BUN and creatinine are both elevated. Now we're having to manage and monitor that GFR. Please see my intrarenal failure video on that where I cover that uh, more, more clearly. The acute three is always calling about decreased urinary output less than 30 cc's in two hours or less than 400. Also, if the patient has a pre-renal or post-renal concern, you would want to notify the doctor about that. And anytime the BUN and creatinine are both elevated and it's an acute situation and the GFR is affected, a doctor would want to be notified. Depending on the condition, the patient might be on a monitor. Blood pressure is always monitored for BP blood pressure, uh, labs, these BMP is always monitored, H&H, &H, also white count. Um, not so much the renal or liver unless it's post problems and then uh, anticoagulants and BMP with CHF. Uh, temperature could be elevated, pulse could also be elevated, uh, respiration for anxiety or uh, pain and blood pressure can be low. Mean arterial pressure can be low and pulse ox could be affected. This is could be uh, too much fluid or too less of fluid. Pulse can be variable and mentation could be uh, disorientation or anxious. Depending on the problem, I mean, that's the big key with acute kidney injury. You need to figure out which one it is acute, uh, pre, post, or is it intrarenal? And that's the major key with this is acute kidney injury, like I said before, is a general condition. Most of these patients can be discharged or they are sent to an ICU to, for closer monitoring. Um, complications are as they stay in acute kidney injury, they, they, they end up being in recovery phase for up to 12 months. And that's a long time. And as we talked about previously, that there's four phases that a person will go through. The onset is the pre or post renal problem or intrarenal. So the oligarch stage can last up to about three weeks and then the diuresis stage can actually go from two to six weeks, which is a very long time where you're really managing that fluid volume status. And like I said before, recovery could last up to 12 months. All in all, acute kidney injury is a almost reversible condition if it is treated and identified quick enough. If not, um, we go into the next phases and we address, address them more aggressively. Well, that's about it. My name is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and you can see my other videos where I cover intravenal a little bit more clearly and the other videos. So I welcome you aboard and if you're not following me now, follow me on social media or Instagram and become a member today.